Okay, then you can explain where you are and turn the yeah. camera there. Uh, we are in uh, Celia. We were doing some location scouting. Uh, originally, the idea was to send from up here, because right around the bend you see down there, there is a very good view of a uh, little fjord and you have the horizon in the background. But then the weather turned uh, pea soupy on us. <laughs> so, I see. Uh, we cut off uh, on our location scouting again. Uh, and be sending from the car until we see somewhere where it looks like it's yeah. nice to go out. The link might be dodgy for just a little bit, but it'll get better uh, as soon as we get down. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you heard her, but Karen said that she was going to be dodgy for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Wi-Fi or the Internet. Yeah, the Internet. Is we only have two bars. Yep. So... The mountain we are now coming down off of is uh, one of the dialect barricades in uh, Norway. Uh, on the one side of the mountain, people speak. Yep, there we go. Yeah. We can repeat it then, just in case. The uh, internet is a little bit dodgy because we are at the top of the mountain. I have to three bars now, so we're going down. Yeah. And we're going up as we go down. <laughs> So that's the benefit of yeah, having... Um, Look at their summer down there. <laughs> this is the benefit of having a girlfriend from Minnesota. Uh, this is not the easy conditions to drive in. <laughs> you got a couple from Minnesota on there, so they know what driving in Duluth is like. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, your mountains are a little bit... We don't have mountains. We have palisades. You can look over there. If you can see. Yeah, but it's not good until we get to Ah, okay. No, never mind. So this is the view I was trying to show, but uh, as you can see, it's kind of visible shit right now. Look the temperature in the car. is a little cooking. So you get a... Now coming down into the, uh, this is a tiny little fjord called uh, Moldefjorn, and we are now coming down into the end of it, which is a place called, uh, well, we are not coming, the end of it is down there, we are coming down, down there at Ida, so in the, at about the middle of it. Mm. Uh, it's a little clearer at the bottom. Gonna say yeah, you've got the single lane roads on the way up, which isn't good if you don't have any momentum. And then it, you have these like areas here where you can widen out and let the other car pass. <laughs> there was a sea battle on this fjord at the. Do you want to walk around a little bit out there and then come back in? No. Okay. It's uh. Uh, there was a sea battle on this fjord at the well, right after the Viking Age in the medieval times when Norway. Um, I mentioned it before because uh, Harald Feinherr had a ridiculous amount of sons. Uh, far into the medieval times, everybody could just claim to be a descendant of him, and it's very hard to disprove. Uh, back in one of these civil wars, a smaller fleet is uh, a, confronted by a bigger fleet, and it tries to use the, you see the narrow part, uh, out in the fjord, right over the little island, you see um, uh, the sound that goes into the fjord. And when you have a small fleet, uh, somewhere like that is a good place to basically even out the numbers, because you can't fit with your full force anyway. But uh, the guys with the small fleet weren't, um, they weren't super experienced warriors, so the big fleet just turns to them, and their ships are probably burnt and sunk in the inlet for the fjord there. Mm. Yeah, we saw that. You can see hi, that's some people. Let's see. Albert is here. You have to say hi to Albert, too. Hi, Albert. And TV and Heidi Lisa. And Winter Wonderland. Until we get to the bottom, all the snow melted. <laughs> and they're saying drive safe, of course. There's only four right now, but that's because we posted last minute, but I'll give you the camera back. We'll drive down more. Yeah. And you decide where we drive. Yeah. Uh, do you 
want to go to Sunny or the other way? Wherever we have internet. We have four bars out of five now, so it's getting better. Yeah, no. You can read there whatever. if you need to see what uh, they say. I am born and raised in this area, so I can talk about anything. <laughs> so. Uh, well, this one's almost all you. There's a car behind us now, so we'll continue down. It doesn't really matter to me which direction. If she continues straight ahead, she'll go to Celia. That's where we've sent from at least Most of the three time times you... before. Yeah. Not four. Uh, if we go the other way, you'll go the uh, road that leads to Mole. Uh, and there's a lot of things on that road, so... We could do that for uh, for the fun of it. Let the guy pass me. There we go. Big car, better traction. <laughs> no, the traction's actually not too bad. I just was we're driving slow because we're filming. See, all the snow is gone down there. But there was snow here yesterday. It just started raining like mad yesterday, and then it. Turns out there. So, Carl, where were you last week? Or Monday? Uh, I was in bed with you most of the day. No, when I was on YouTube, you weren't. I was getting lost in your neighborhood, which is damn near impossible because it's just a circle. <laughs> it just turns out the circle was wider than I thought. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, and you also seem to think that everybody's driveway is some kind of magical shortcut that will lead you home. It looked like a road! <laughs> No, um, I was uh, in bed with the fever and uh, just watching my confused girlfriend walk around. Uh, <laughs> she's not that far from me. She's like uh, 100 meters. Uh, <laughs> but that's 100 meters with no road and a small cliff in between. Yeah. So, I knew where the house was. It was just finding the road up again. If I would have realized where it was, I would have just turned around and gone the other way back because it was faster that way. But no, in my head, it's just right over there, so I can just go around. You go down, huh? Yeah, we can do that. And then, uh, but what did what kind of sick did you get? Because everybody's getting it. Uh, fever. Yeah, you got a, the flu. Everyone in Norway is getting the flu. And it starts out with, what, a, a day of cough, and then it's like two to three days of train wreck fever. This particular intersection... Uh, I think it's a myth, but uh, some of the locals insist that they have been jumping their cars in this intersection. That is, drive like hell up this road, and then the car lets go of the road when you get to the intersection. Might be true. Never seen anybody do it, though. Yeah, a comment. Uh, Happy New Year and man flu. Man flu. No, actually, his man flu was pretty good. Okay, so hopefully my ex's family isn't watching, but um, Carl's got nothing on him when it comes to man flu. Carl just pretty much slept. And then uh, looked like death warmed over. Can I get you anything? Iced coffee. And that's about it. <laughs> no, but you gave it to me, too. Um, then as soon as you started getting better, I got down. I went down with the two-day fever as well. And then it looks like your mother got it. You can look over there. Uh, no, my mother didn't get it. I'm pretty sure. Look over there. Yeah. That's pretty too. These are the uh, innermost uh, farms of the Moldefjord. Uh, there has been some kind of settlement here since the mid Neolithic age. Uh, so uh, I, I haven't been able more. to find it again. But there is some kind of map on the internet of uh, archaeological finds. And this area is littered with them. There are uh, Stone Age, Bronze Age, Iron Age, Viking Age burials all over the place. And I did. Because then you can see there now. More. Yeah. And also the part we are driving past right now is where the Stat, uh, Stat ship tunnel is going to be built. S-T-A-D-T. -T. Stat, yeah? Which is the name of the county? Yeah. Yeah. It's also the name of the peninsula that the uh, ship tunnel is going to go through to make it... Uh, but I've been talking your ass off about how dangerous the piece of sea out here is. The point of the tunnel is to but not die. 
We're driving tourist speed, so I'm letting them pass. <laughs> How tall are the mountains here, by the way? I don't know. That that one is pretty tall. Uh, but uh, the other ones are in the 700 meter radi- uh, area, I believe. So most of these are shorter than Gudvangen, but that one I think is as tall? Uh, that one is, I think, about as tall, but it is very round. It's kind of hard to see from this angle, but it's, uh, uh, it's taller than it looks because it's kind of like this um, sugar loaf shape. Hmm. It's also uh, massively avalanching all over the west of Norway now, it says. They've said on the news. Yeah. Or expected to because of the rain. Not here. Or by, uh, avalanches do happen, but they're pretty rare. Uh, you got just little bit markings of it, but not much. Uh, no, as I said, they do happen, but yeah. uh, nothing compared to the rain. Uh, what are you gonna what are you gonna do for New Year's Eve, by the way? And is Raymond on? Raymond should already be in next year. <laughs> but uh, I did uh, I did post a little bit late, so most people in the United States aren't even are just getting up. Uh, my plans of the, uh, New Year's Eve are pretty simple. Uh just want a drink or two and then I want to keep your cats calm so I don't go ape shit when uh, uh the fireworks start. Yeah, I noticed uh you can see over there now too. Um we got the, oh you can see over there there's the sunlight is actually hitting the mountain over there. Uh, well, I don't know if you can see it through the you're going I through the window thing. I don't think sunlight is quite as magical for normal people as it is. Uh, but you yeah, you can see it like over there now in the picture, yeah. Oh, but uh, they put new windows on in your bedroom, so you got, instead of having these little uh, basement-looking windows, you've got bigger windows now, so all of a sudden you can hear the wind much better than we could before. Yeah, this is Moldestan. So this is basically the town center of Moldefjord. Uh I don't know, I might live like... 20 people. And they're not counting sheep? No. <laughs> so this tiny little place is actually bigger than Gudvangen. <clears throat> Did anybody else get the sick, get the flu for uh, Christmas? <laughs> we finally take time off work and we both go, we spend the whole time in bed. <laughs> Um, what else was I going to ask? Oh, yeah, there was the stash busting thing, too. Uh, today is technically the last day for stash busting, unless you want to keep going. Um, and then I think we have to try the color thing that we were talking about, the color challenges that uh, I was talking about last week. I don't think you caught that, Carl, though. But uh, there's a group, uh, a Norwegian group on Facebook called Farvalong, uh, which means color along. And I think it's for knit and crochet, but basically whatever hobby you do, even if it's quilting, um, you choose a color of the month, and this is the month's color, you know, the month, uh, for example, maybe January will be the blue month, so you have to make something blue. It doesn't matter how big or how small, but you make something blue. So I thought, well, we could try something like that for the next 12, or until, um, until we do stash long, stash lifting again, because any excuse to burn stash. Yeah, can you hear Karen clearly? Clearly. Yes, it is. You have to say hi to people, too, because you can't see the names. I can't read all this distance. Oh, well, then I'll pull over and read for you. Oh, we're going into two bars, so it's going to be a bit low on the link again, and then it'll pick up. Let's see. I can read the chat here for you. There, we can see that. What are we looking at over there, by the way? Uh, other side of the fjord. Um, Audra's here. She says, Happy New Year. Nielsen from Bali. So I see you're freezing. <laughs> Maria has, says, Love driving video. Happy, uh, but just popped in to say Happy New Year, and then I'm off again. Happy New Year, Maria. Got me to it. Albert also got the flu on Christmas. 
Uh, let's see. Matthew Hemnes is from Egan again. Yeah, uh, by the way, but so look, Egan has way more snow than this part. But earlier, that's about what Egan, but Egan knows what it's like to drive in ice. <laughs> And uh, Kiwi said she got the flu the week before Christmas, so she got well again just in time. Oh, and Albert got new cufflinks for his suit, uh, and it has a motive of a migration area, era, Bracteop. Am I seeing that right, or is it a misspelling? Bracteop. I'm thinking it was bracelet, but do you know what that is? I'm so sad I can't read on this distance. Uh, Brack, the at, t at, uh, but. Yeah, I've it heard the word before, but it's not, bra it's a, it is an actual word. It's not that I'm misspelling bracelet. No, that's what I was thinking. So, yeah, we'll finish the um, stitch along and then we'll start the. I think we'll start a color along. I have to think of some obscure colors or something, uh, I don't this know. This used to be their school. And that this one was in use until. Uh, oh, that's a high school. Oh, this. No, that's uh, where you. <laughs> this is a uh, fiskemotok. Uh, basically, when uh, fishermen deliver their uh, fish, they deliver it to places like this. This is not oh, yeah. good. No, but even can. though most of them end up working out anyway. You might have to show what you're looking at. <laughs> yeah. There you go. All the snow is gone. And uh, there is a Bronze Age burial uh, area right next to the Fiskemotok. So, about where the school is. The fisheries. The hatcheries, is that what it's called? Or? Nope, you're not hatching or anything. No, it's fisheries. It's, um, well, Fiskemotok sounds like fish receiving. You receive the fish. I do. <laughs> That's exactly what I do. Okay. And the tractor eggs? Why do you call those? Well, obviously, yeah. <laughs> I would. I never heard it called a tractor egg before. <laughs> those those uh, bales of hay. You have to look that way too. It's pretty. Like with the camera, turn it completely. Yeah. And then if you pivot your hand, it'll turn the camera. There you go. And you can see over there too. That peninsula, from the end of that peninsula and back, uh, there is, uh, it's swimmable. I haven't swum it myself, but uh, you can swim across there. There is a trick to it. You have to do it at uh, exactly high tide or exactly low tide. Mm. Because if you do it in between, the stream going into or out of the fjord is too powerful and you will be uh, swimming three times the distance. There, it looks straight out. Yeah. Yeah, so that's um, the little piece of open sea you have. Uh, Here. Just to turn it that way so you can see what's going on over there. There. It looks different there, yeah. By the way, those people that we just passed on had a reflex strip, um, which I think is extremely, extremely important. Anyone in the north knows why you should be wearing one. But here, um, you can't see people when they're walking in the road if they don't have it on. So how cold is the water about now, do you think, here? Because it's salt water. Uh, it will be pretty exactly four or five degrees. Oh, that's like warmer than Lake Superior. <laughs> I would think it's about the same temperature as Lake Superior, unless Lake Superior is frozen. Lake Superior is frozen. Yes. Not all of it. It'll never be 100% frozen surface, but... Pretty. So, Carl, you made a New Year's resolution last year. You want to share? Last year? Yeah. yeah. That was last year. Well, for this, yeah. What was your New Year's resolution last year? To be more active on social media. And uh, now that we're at the end of the year, do you think you've completed your goal? If I'm written a single post, I have. <laughs> you did. <laughs> now you're doing this now. What's that boat over there? You have to turn uh, it a bit to see that's, it. Well, it's a boat, but it's not really a boat. It's uh, part of the... Take your arm uh, over here. The fish 
form you see there. Eight. Those uh, circular things. Uh, it's. Uh, those are hatcheries. I believe it's salmon. Uh, no, it's not a hatchery. It's a fish farm. The fish has already been hatched before it gets out. Oh. Uh, and that thing is. Uh, I don't believe it's manned. I think it's automated. It's uh, mm -hmm. the thing that feeds them and uh, basically takes care of them. There are people on it from time to time, but I don't think people are necessary for the running of the thing. Huh. Let's see. Actually, we'll just do it that way a little bit longer. Uh, Kiwi says, I have ordered yarn for the biggest project yet, uh, a mood blanket. Uh, for 365 days, and I will add a new row with a color that symbolizes how I felt that day. Oh, those are so cool. I've been wanting to do those, but um, but they, they have them with the weather as well, where you, like, assign a certain shade of color for each weather temperature or, like, rain, snow, and cold or however, and then it kind of goes. You can do the same thing with a scarf if you don't want to donate the time to a whole blanket, but uh, it's quite cool to do, But the, and the idea is, yeah, you just do, well, if it was crochet, you would do, or knit, you would do, two rows a day, back and forth, you get one stripe, but in crochet you could do one stripe. Needle binding, you could just do one as well. And then um, the only reason I haven't ever done one is because I think I would have to keep a journal to write it all down so that I could do it at different times. But I like the I love the idea of doing that. You have to keep us up to date on that, too. How is your how is your uh, hood going, though, by the way, Kiwi? Um, Arlene is here from Winnipeg. And Eurus is here. Hi, Eurus. <laughs> Should we see what Carl looks like, by the way? <laughs> he looks scared. <laughs> Lake Superior is 32 degrees Fahrenheit today, so it is zero Celsius, by the way. Uh, and, yeah, and then we're caught up. Okay, I'll drive a little bit further while Carl films. Uh, so, this... Uh, you piece of no man land is called uh, Rondarheimstrondi. Uh, so it's there between uh, Moldefjord and Moldestad. And the next um, village, which will be Rondarheim, I don't, I didn't have a school in my day. Uh, they might have had one before that, but I don't think so. Because they are within uh, walking, skiing, biking distance of uh, North Carolina. Is that so, what you said was automated? Yes. You're going to show what it looks like. You can I see it here. I believe it is automated. I'm not entirely sure. It might be manned, but uh, I don't see people on it all the time, just sometimes. Yeah. Oh, well, it's always in the water anyway. I mean, not always in the water, but it's always there. Of course, it's always in the water. It's a boat. <laughs> yes. No, but every time we drive by, I always see it running around between. It's always in the water. Yeah. Okay. So how many people live in Celia, by the way, where you're from? It's more populated than this part. Uh, it, it's a matter of definitions. You see these tiny little things uh, close to Celia all, uh, in all directions. But in Celia proper, I believe it is like 600. But I'm not sure about these numbers. And uh, I'm also not sure about the, what, which borders they operated with. I'm up with those numbers. Hmm. This is also part of the fish farm. Oh, yeah. So how many numbers, what is the number of silly that they come up with, the amount that? Six, approximately 600. Okay. Yeah, I missed that bit. And then Moloi, which is the closest, largest city? Yeah. Or, that is not even a city either? It's a tent stead or whatever? Uh, it's a city because they can decide to be a city for... Earlier, you had to be uh, 10,000 inhabitants to be considered a city by Norwegian standards. Uh, Måla is a city by defining Måla Centrum for about 4,000 inhabitants. And all the rest of the county is like the suburbs of Måla Centrum. Centrum means downtown. Yeah. yeah. So basically, they are a city-like uh, object. Oh, Raymond just came on. He was distracted by no needle binding, so he wasn't watching needle binding. Apparently, he's not drunk enough. And he promised us. He, we, <laughs> I told him he had to be drunk because it's New Year's with him. Happy New Year, Raymond! 
What are the winning lottery numbers for today? If the, oh, maybe don't triple clip the thing there. In front of you. Yeah, there you go. I don't know if you do like that. With your hand, you'll see up and more less dashboard and more road. There you go. Carl's learning. Normally, I'm the one that gets to hold the camera, and he stands in front and looks pretty. If you need to see that, what she wrote, I don't know. So, <coughs> Ray, we're we're so last year when it comes to Raymond. This is what the final days of 2022 look like in Norway. So it's two. It's almost 2:30. So we have uh, about 10 hours, nine and a half hours to go. And I've been, I heard they've been lighting, oh yeah, you have to tell them how they do the fireworks here, because in the United States, there's usually um, like a, a gathering somewhere, for example, that St. Paul would have one in Minnesota, and they'd have big big fireworks display at the Capitol, um, or there's also, you know, Duluth, any, all the cities, they usually have like a gathering, and then they shoot up a bunch of fireworks, because fireworks are kind of illegal to own, or to... Uh, that varies wildly from place to place in Norway. Uh, generally speaking, if it doesn't have, if it isn't a rocket, if it doesn't have a steering stick, mm. uh, it is generally legal. Sort of mortar-like things people buy on their own, and then they generally just use them with their family. Uh, obviously, some people stockpile, and uh, the county wants people to come to the football field and shoot them up there but they don't really have the force of law to enforce that and most people don't really want to be organized like that see over there that was really pretty i didn't that know this island is called barman that's where life Ola and ingeborg comes from huh and that one's uh how tall do you think that is you I can don't know. see at the bottom how the houses look in comparison, there's some at the very bottom there. Okay, and then while looking at that, there's some comments here. Uh, Arlene says, uh, "It's so flat where I live. Uh, it's hard to imagine mountains. I can see them for, I can see for 10 kilometers in places that are farmers' fields without even seeing a house. That's a bit like that in southern southern part of Minnesota. We don't have mountains anywhere near Minnesota, but it gets a bit more hilly in the north." Uh, Raymond says uh, it's nearly uh, 9.30 a.m. in the morning, or no, 9.30 here. Uh, they had the fireworks uh, in Sydney on the on the telly because nearly it's nearly 12.30 a.m. over there. Ah. Crikey, he writes. Oh, my gosh, that's such a very good Australian word. <laughs> okay, we'll keep going. <coughs> so... One thing I've noticed about Norway, though, is anybody can get fireworks here, a certain kind of them anyway, and, and they cost an arm and a leg, but you guys have, like, no problem spending money on fireworks. But then everybody, if everybody gets fireworks and everybody lights them off, it looks like World War III. Um, obviously not so much here as it would be in, like, Oslo and in the metro areas because there's fireworks going off in all directions. Um, when I'm in Vespi, uh, yeah, they're going off in all directions, but I, it's a lot more. Vespi is uh, smaller, and uh, maybe it's up to 18,000 now. Uh, so it's getting a little bit more and more populated. But then I went to Drammen one year, and I, oh, my God. <laughs> it was so much smoke in the air from all the fireworks that were going off. Uh, no, uh, I believe it was 2007. They came up with some restrictions. The... Before that, also rockets were uh, available to buy. Uh, but the, the illegal bit is the wooden uh, the wooden stick that makes it basically go straight. So for some reason, the unsafe firework is still uh, allowed. The one that basically goes where you want it to go is not. <laughs> the reasoning behind it is if you live in a city like Oslo or Bergen, and uh, Thousands of these sticks are being fired into the air, and at the same time, basically every inhabitant is staring into the sky. Then the odds of somebody getting a stick in their eye is not completely negligible. No, uh, is it the bottle rockets you're thinking of? Uh, they're now getting to Flistar. This is where my mother is from, uh, originally. Uh, 
And here you can see some kind of interesting prices from the uh, from the last ice age. Uh, there are some really big stones just hanging around here. Uh, there is one up there. I don't think it's easy to I don't think it's easy to see because it's so overgrown up there now. But the one in the end of the oh, there's one coming up on the right. Yeah. Uh, the one at the end of the uh, band here is very obvious. Is there a glacier? No, it wasn't a glacier here. And uh, uh, here too, there has been uh, a form of some sort, at least since the Viking Age. There you see the big rock. That's from the Ice Age? huge. <laughs> and uh, some avalanches are pretty rare around here. Uh, the exception is okay, it's very hard to show off. Oh yeah, the I have to, I manually have to do the thing we shouldn't do, but dick with the controller. The zoom, or the, yeah. That mode. Uh, particularly in the autumn, there are stone sites uh, almost constantly oh. from it. You're not, yeah, go out more. There you go. Uh, let's see. Oop, sorry. It's, uh, that's why we don't do it with the zoom thing here. Or the, there we go. Now, you can you see it now? Where are the mount sites you were talking about? Yeah, storm slides from that mountain. And uh if you see the you see the old white house next to a newer white completely grown into a newer white house there. And that's about it, yeah. That's where my mother grew up. Yeah. Do you still have family there or does she? Uh well no. Uh, the, the other house belongs to her brother, but he is there just a few days in the summer. Mm. Okay, now you're zoomed out again. Let's see. Arlene says, uh, fireworks are uh, not that illegal here. In fact, uh, there are is a fireworks factory um, in our in our town. Uh, that there are strict regulations to follow, though, yeah. Kiwi says, uh, yeah, that's how it ends up uh, getting really smoky here in Bergen because of the fireworks. I would imagine there's so many, when they're the higher the population, the more the fireworks are going off. But because they're not going off in one sec one area, they're going off everywhere. Fireworks are illegal in uh, Western Australia, but some get stuck in from China, or snuck in from China, says Raymond. Oh, yeah, we're really, um, Norwegians seem to really like watching airport uh, videos or airport documentaries from Australia about border control and everything. They're all British made, but <laughs> so we see they sneak in all kinds of fun stuff in your country. So fireworks wouldn't uh, surprise me too much. Okay, now if you triple click the uh, thing, it will recalibrate the gimbal and then we can drive a little bit more. Yeah, there you go. And tilt your hand like that. There, and then it'll, why is that not fixing it a little bit? Oop, there we go. And you can see ahead a bit. Okay. <clears throat> We're doing all right bar-wise. We're at three out of five bars, so hope the link seems to be holding up pretty well. Uh, here is another uh, funny thing. This is old. I don't know even if you know it, if it is law or tradition. But the farm you see is right ahead. I get a lot more sunlight than the farm that is right underneath the mountain where my mother grew up. So there was an old agreement, or it might be just what belongs to whom, that said that uh, only the farm uh, where my mother grew up, where the sun don't shine, so to speak, <laughs> uh, are allowed to fish in the inner part of this little bay. Uh, because uh, every year you get big schools of mackerel going in there, and if you can fish uh, with a net, you can get enormous holes. The people on this farm, where the sun does shine, don't really like that because they want to be able to fish there as well. Uh, back when my mother was a uh, teenager, I guess, two brothers, one is living on my uh, mother's, uh, where my mother <coughs> grew up, and the other one is living out here, have a disagreement about uh, fishing rights. 
which uh, they decide to settle as, gent uh, as gentlemen with rifles. So the guy uh, living out here goes and puts up his net in the inner part of the bay. The guy who is entitled to be alone, uh, to uh, be the only one to fish there, gets angry. So he rows out with a boat and just starts cutting his fishing equipment to shreds. Uh, the other guy uh, don't really like that, so he climbs up on his roof with his rifle and starts shooting at the guy who is destroying his fishing equipment. <laughs> uh, my mother's father, the brother of these two lunatics, are uh, were writing a journal at this time, and his journal is the driest thing you can possibly read. It's like, the weather is nice today, the macro is here, it's snowing, it's raining. Uh, I gave 50 kroner to this lady so she could go to a party. That's the type of things he writes down. But in this period, he writes, and then Christopher tried to shoot Lars. <laughs> the weather is nice. The weather is nice. It's raining. The mackerel is here. The weather is nice. The weather is nice. The police came and took Christopher's gun today. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other fun stories from the area? <laughs> yes, but I don't know how far under the bus I can throw these people. Well, if it's your mother, your father, um, I'm pretty sure he's not around anymore. <laughs> Well, he is not, but everybody has this sentence, you know. Yeah, that's true. And he is also, he is, they, they have a very bad, uh, they have very bad uh, creativity when it comes to male names. So these two guys are Life and Christopher, but basically everybody else in that entire bay is named Hans. If you film that way, you'll get more light, yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, more. My mother's father is Stora Hans, Big Hans. Uh, then you also have uh, Lisha Hans, Little Hans. Then you have uh, Skula Hans, Sh uh, School Hans, which was a teacher, obviously. Uh, then you had a guy called Silke Hans, so Silk Hans, uh, because he apparently was kind of uh, full of himself and just bought the best of everything. <laughs> Uh, Silicons, I like that. That's like Mr. Fancy Pants. Yep. <laughs> so it's like four guys, at least, near, uh, named Hans, living practically on top of each other. How many of those are family names, though, like carried down? You've got the whole naming uh, system, where like, you could be, technically could be courtesan. <laughs> strictly speaking, if you were using normal Norwegian uh, naming conventions, all of them would have the same first and last name. Mm. So that would be Hans Kvarnevik, all four of them. So that's why you use these distinctions. Uh, okay, this one is big, this one is small, this one works in a school, and this one bears silk. So <laughs> now you know which one you're talking about. <laughs> but um, when I was doing uh, genealogy back in the day, oh, things are getting so dark on the screen. Yes, I was wondering if you have a battery problem, maybe. No, it's not a battery problem. Let's see. It might be... Um, no, it's the, um, hopefully it looks okay for them anyway, but for me anyway, um, the, when it, it's, when the, when the light changes, it changes the screen yeah, from night to night. Yeah, it woke up as soon as you fingered it, so. Yeah. Uh, Al Albert says a barn near, uh, him burned yesterday and the animals fled into the woods, so they're out looking for them. I heard there was a, quite a few fires actually quite recently, this week, this yeah, summer. week. Norway in the winter, that's what we do. Mm. Raymond says, yeah, those crazy airport videos. <laughs> oh, and interesting. You don't get sun, so you don't get fish. I didn't think about that either, about the fish thing, though. Um, and the weather is nice, but uh, the feds came to laugh out loud. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah, and he's, oh, yeah, Albert says it looks fine then. He said, okay, uh, they should have joined the Navy, he says, Robert, and then it would have been all Hans on deck. Oh, that's so bad. <laughs> so but Maybe Raymond has been drinking a little. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, yeah, no, it's the it's it's fine for them. It's just the uh, brightness on my the screen. But okay, then we'll keep driving. Um, but there was when I was doing genealogy anyway. Uh, the way we could find out, uh, for example, if uh, Carl had a son and his last name would now be Carlson, and then um, if uh, say Carl's son was uh, Christopher or whatever, then. 
Christopher's son would be not no longer Carlson, but Christopher's son, but at some point that changed. And then if it's Norwegian, it's S-E-N for the most part, and if it's Swedish, it's S-O-N, Son and Sen. Yeah, and particularly when you go from one system to another, it gets really confusing. Yeah. Just one example, somewhere around here, I'm not that good now of getting too far away from home to actually know what places are called. This is Vedrus, I believe. Yeah. But somewhere around here is a place called uh, Hovik. And uh, in Hovik, there lived a man called uh, Harman Kvarnevik. And his name was, he was called Harman i Hovikane, also Harman who lives in Hovik. But at the same time, you had a uh, uh, principal at the school in Salia called Harman Hovik. That's his actual name. Uh, his last name is Hovik and his first name is Harman. So you have two people who are referred to as Harman Hovik, while one of them is actually called Harman Kvarnevik. Yeah. And there's also a place around here called Kvarnevik, just to make the place, uh, just to make everything completely confusing. Uh, Hovik means Ho is the little shark that you find in Norwegian waters, and a kvarn is kvarn. So in one of these bays, people fish shark, and in the other one, they might bread. Out of the shark, I'll grind your bones to make my bread. <laughs> um, yeah, that may be touching the screen. I change the uh, brightness for you, but anyway, I can see it. Um, my, my last name Bium is from the area. It means of the of the city. Um, B is the city and then Ulm is in the round. But uh, Ordal, your last name, is actually an area called Ordal of, in Norway, and you're not from there? No. So how did you get that name? Because there is another area in Norway called Ordal, and I'm from there. Okay. Or my family is. Uh, it's an actual farm name. So uh, people from that farm would have that name, or people who... Uh, uh, lived there would have that name while they lived there, and then they've changed their name when they moved. So it's confusing as all hell to do genealogy before people get fixed sonnets. Yep. Actually, what I just figured I had a hard time finding my uh, my Polish family back beyond my uh, great grandparents, my great great grandparents, um, because that was the last generation that was in Poland. Um, my great grandmother is one, and her brother, her husband, etc., and family. Uh, four of them moved to the United States, um, but the last, the generation that remained behind, that would be the great great grandparents. That I can't get past them; it's hard to find it. And on the passports, it says that they're from a place called Borek, uh, which, in for some reason, all these years I thought it was a, a village or a farm name or something that I can't find anymore. And then, as I was re-going through this stuff for moving. And I find a bunch of envelopes with the addresses and things on there. Um, it has the name of a city, uh, which I cannot pronounce anyway. It's the uh, it's it's a bigger one, kind of southeast of uh, Warsaw, called R S R C Z something like that. Anyway, but it turns out that Borek is actually like a neighborhood or a province in that city, <laughs> and that's why I couldn't find it. Uh, we have now driven pretty far, so if we are going to get back any time soon, we should probably turn around. Yeah, we can do that. We only have 15 minutes left anyway. Yeah, no, but if you drive for another 15 minutes, that's another half. Uh, yeah, no, 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 we almost in Molo is what I was thinking. We might as well just shop in Molo. Not that far, but uh, yeah, we could do that. I can turn, uh, because um, as long as we make the grocery store before it closes, because in Norway, we, well, in the United States, the stores were open all year round. Or uh, pretty much if even Christmas and Easter and Thanksgiving it would be open. Oops, Jesus, I almost went down the embankment. Yeah, try not to do that. No, I can't get my car into gear. There we go. <laughs> it, I thought it was in first and it was in reverse. Still, I'm not getting. I'm still getting used to this new car. <laughs> anyway, but in Norway, um, nope. If it's a holiday, everything's closed. Uh, it's closed on Sunday as well. Uh, so if you want to get anything to eat or buy anything from the grocery store, you have like limited hours on today. Uh, it's everything's closed tomorrow. And then um, yeah, anyway, so you get very limited times to shop. 
Unless you're in Gudvangen, apparently. They like to open every day over there. <laughs> yes, but uh, there are three days a year that are like Super Sundays. Uh, as in, uh, things that are normally open will be closed. Or even things that are normally open on Sundays will often be closed. Yeah. That's the first day of Christmas, uh, so the 25th. Uh, the first new, uh, day of New Year, so the 1st and the 17th of May. Oh, there's a waterfall in front there, if you can see it. The other thing is you can't buy alcohol on any of those days. And you also can't buy alcohol on the day you vote. <laughs> I thought that was funny, because, like, that's going to keep them from making it more. I think Raymond is asking about your new car. Oh, well, it's new to me, new. Um, my I, my motor died on the other one due to too much um, mountain driving with a full load of stuff. Uh so I had to get a new car. <laughs> but I'll uh what type of new car is it? It's a well it's a twenty fourteen so it's not new. It's a it's an it's a golf Volkswagen. <laughs> a Volkswagen golf anyway. I haven't had one of these before. My last one was an Opel Astra. Uh but so this one's a little bit bigger which means I can put more crap in it <laughs> to care to drive back and forth. But uh the dealership, anyway, has put it on a six-month guarantee, so hopefully it'll make it till the time I'm done moving, um, and then I can get a better car. So if it makes it six months, I'll be happy. We've already put this to the test. Carl, do you want to tell them about our adventurous trip back to Vespi uh, just before Christmas, where we got to really test, uh, test how well the warranty on the car is? Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, uh... First, one of the headlights went out. Now that's okay, though. <laughs> uh, but we couldn't fix it, because when you try to take out the old one, it just spins around forever and doesn't come out. <laughs> um, then uh, several alarm lights start blaring. Uh, the most important one seems to have to do with the t temperature of the oil, which is apparently by too high. Well, we're still three hours from home. <laughs> so uh, every... 30 minutes or so, we stopped for like 10, 20 minutes. To let uh, the oil to cool down. Just yeah. let the car cool down. Then we finally get there, but we get there five hours later <laughs> than we're supposed to. Um, go to sleep, get up in the morning to go drive the car the uh, five minutes to the gas station, or to the uh, mechanic, where I got it from anyway, and... Uh, all of a sudden, it has a new, new, a new noise that sounded really bad. <laughs> so I thought the guy was going to rip me a new ass and go, what in the hell did you do to the car? But nope, he just gave us the keys back and said, there you go, all better. No no sign, no nothing. It was all, um, yeah, I can check that in a minute for you. Uh, but so I guess we really got to check out how the warranty goes. But I did tell him when I was getting it, is it going to be able to handle going up and down the mountain twice a week for six months with a load full of stuff? And he said, yep, yep, no, no problem. I said, okay, so as long as, uh, I mean, it wasn't exactly a lot of money, but uh, it, I just needed to last and to to be able to work anyway. So, But it was nice to, uh, it wasn't nice that we had the oil problem happen out in the middle of nowhere, but it was nice to see that it literally was just a matter of just drop off the keys, we'll fix it, and you get it back. No problem, nothing, no questions asked, nothing. And they even put in the new light bulb without using the one we bought, so that was nice. As soon as I can pull over, I'll see what it says on chat there. Because we had about 10 minutes left, too. So what kind of projects are you looking to make for the new year, by the way? Um, I have a couple of things in mind I want to do, but it depends. If the hats haven't sold too fast, then I can do something fun. Okay, there's a bus stop. Uh, okay, let me see. I'll look here while you... There we go. Let me come look out the window while I read chat here. Mm -hmm. Harley had a Golf uh, 90s, but, he let, but she liked it. Yeah. Raymond says, we need a car that can carry a ton of wool up the mountain. Oh, Carl's going out to get fresh air. <laughs> Actually, we can uh, get out of the car. Let's see. I'll get out of the car here. And we can see how... I have to go closer to you, Carl, because you're on the headphones. Oh, you got the headphones.
sound sense. Do you have the volume? Knob. Okay, yeah, no. Uh, Arlene had a golf in the 90s. Uh, I like, like, it. we had something close to a golf. I had an Opal Swing a uh, long time ago. That one was pretty nice. But yeah, no, uh, so Ramp needs a car that can carry a ton of wool up the mountain. You know, because he's a sheep herder and everything, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> he's got new plans for the 2023 season here, isn't he? Keep the wool on the sheep. the sheep up the mountain. Yeah. Oh, this one can hold a bit. Oh, it's got more room. <laughs> oh, so it's more space than my other car. <laughs> Hopefully it'll last. It just has to last six months. But for 2014, my uh, my I'm not getting my hopes up. <laughs> but uh, as long as the warranty is uh, held to par, then I'm good. Um, shark bread. <laughs> Oh, they said, yeah, and in our lane says, yeah, they can see everything fine because they can see every raindrop. So, so, anyway, now that we're on the side of the road here. Oh, I can check out my glasses so I can see. <laughs> and I look blind. Um, what do you want to do next week? Uh, seven. Oh, I like the planner in the relationship. Yeah. I like the I, you know, the trick is, the, the secret is letting you think you're the planner in their relationship. The thing is, uh, like manual on There we go. Can you do your post for me on social media, please? There he is. Social media, Carl. <laughs> we'll be biking again next weekend, though. But it'll be Saturday at 6 o'clock. We go back to Saturday, but then we'll be indoors again. Oh, but we got a bread maker for Christmas, Carl. What are your plans? Raymond, have you come up with anything fun that Carl needs to try to make other than uh, the really funky cheese? We have to try something with the funky cheese. What do you have?